While the United States has been vocal about the way China has been acting in recent times, the European Union has restrained itself mainly because of the economic ties. But this has changed. The US and the EU have expressed strong concern over what they said were China's problematic and unilateral actions in disputed seas in the Asia-Pacific, stating they would work together to manage their rivalry with Beijing. In a joint statement following a high-level meeting between top diplomats Wendy Sherman, Deputy Secretary of State, and Stefano Sinino, European External Action Service Secretary General, the two said China's actions in the South China Sea, East China Seas, and Taiwan Strait undermine peace and security in the region and have a direct impact on the security and prosperity of both the United States and European Union. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how the EU is now poised to oppose Chinese illicit activities. Let's get into the details. This video is sponsored by War Thunder, the most comprehensive military vehicle online game for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, in which you can go to battle on more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s. The game has an amazing attention to detail and focuses on a realistic combat experience, which is why knowing your vehicles and skill really makes a difference. It's easy to get into and all you need to play is nothing more but your mouse and keyboard or controller. Immerse yourself in cross-platform combat with more than 20 million other military vehicle enthusiasts from all over the world. Download and play War Thunder for free using the link in the description below and also get a free bonus tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account. The US-EU dialogue on China was set up earlier this year and the statement followed its second high-level meeting. Sherman and Sinino discussed the growing list of China's actions that are of concern, including those that breach international law and run counter to the shared values and interests of the United States and the EU. Apart from Chinese actions in the South China Sea, the East China Sea, and Taiwan Strait, a few other things have also been discussed. Human rights abuses in Xinjiang, where around one million mostly Muslim Uyghurs are reported to have been sent to re-education camps. The crackdown in Hong Kong, the situation in Tibet, and the spread of disinformation sponsored or supported also came up for discussion. The statement noted the need for US and EU to maintain continuous and close contacts on our respective approaches as we invest and grow our economies, cooperate with China where possible, and manage our competition and systemic rivalry with China responsibly. While the statements from the EU may come as a surprise for some, Keen observers would have seen it coming. France, a major player in the EU, had already set the tone. Earlier this year, French Defense Minister Florence Parley had announced that the French nuclear attack submarine SNA Amaraud conducted a patrol in the South China Sea. She tweeted, along with a picture of the two vessels at sea, This extraordinary patrol has just completed a passage in the South China Sea a striking proof of our French Navy's capacity to deploy far away and for a long time together with our Australian, American, and Japanese strategic partners. Germany, another leading EU member, made its intentions known too. A German warship was sent to the South China Sea for the first time in almost two decades. The Bayern, set for its six-month deployment, from a naval base in Wilhelmshaven, northwestern Germany, with more than 200 soldiers on board. Germany's foreign minister, Heiko Maas, had said the Indo-Pacific region was one part of the world where the international order of the future would be decided, and as such, it was important that Germany have a presence in it. Maas had said, We aim to be involved 
and to take responsibility for maintaining the rule-based international order, indirectly pointing to China's hegemonic behavior in the region. Notably, the frigate was refused permission to visit Shanghai during its mission by China. The EU has unveiled its Global Gateway Project, which is seen as a European alternative to China's Belt and Road Initiative, or BRI. The EU's 300 billion euro plan could be a serious threat to Beijing's Influence Extension Initiative. China was not mentioned in the European Commission's press release that unveiled details of the new initiative. It's difficult not to view the Global Gateway as a European response to the Belt and Road Initiative, the huge Chinese program of loans for transportation and digital infrastructure projects across nearly 70 countries that also indirectly extends China's far-reaching economic sphere of influence. The EU may be playing catch-up, but it brings in financing that's clear and more favorable. Critics of the BRI say Chinese loans are a way to create an economic dependence on Beijing. Sri Lanka's case with the Hanbin Tota port is frequently cited as an example of the Chinese debt trap, which pushed the nation, when unable to repay its loan, to hand over a majority stake and 99-year lease on the port to a Chinese firm. While the situation is evolving, a catalyst could see it being accelerated further. Tensions between China and Lithuania have escalated since Taiwan opened a representative office in the Baltic nation's capital last month. Lithuania's dispute with China rose after local media reported that goods from some of its companies were barred from entering Chinese ports. Lithuania's foreign minister, Gabrielis Langsburgis, described the move as unannounced sanctions and said Lithuania will seek assistance from the European Commission next week to solve the issue. It's unprecedented when one EU member state is being partially sanctioned, he said. The next high-level meeting is expected to take place in mid-2022, but we could see the EU taking actions against China even before that. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.